In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold the origami model Cutie Cat designed by Mark Kirschenbaum. I'll use a square sheet of paper with a side length of 30 centimeters or 11 and 3 fourths of an inch, which results in a cat with a height of about 5.5 centimeters or 2 and a quarter of an inch and a width of about 10 centimeters or 4 inches. The model is mostly flat, but many layers do add up, so I recommend using tissue foil as I'm doing here, because it folds flat very nicely. And I even have a video that shows how I make tissue foil using kitchen foil, tissue paper and plain white glue. But let's get started. Now for a white cat with a red bow, start with the white side up. And we're first going to crease the diagonals. And if you want to avoid one very uh, apparent crease, make that first mountain fold just a soft one because we only need it for orientation. And the other diagonal we're going to crease in a strong crease. Then open, flip over and fold in half edge to edge. We're creating a white preliminary base here. Unfold and also crease the other direction. And especially when you're using tissue foil, I actually recommend adding some more pre-creasing because it makes life a bit easier. We want to fold a bird base, so what I'm going to do is take one of these edges and bring it to the diagonal and then crease only up to that crease you just created. And you do that all the way around. And once you have that, we can then collapse our preliminary base by simply reinforcing those creases that went uh, edge to edge and then push together and we're going to go along the strong crease rather than the soft crease we did in the beginning so that that crease is almost not visible. Then we're going to bring in the paper to fold a bird base and just go along the creasing you prepared. Makes life a lot easier and of course you can also add the creasing now rather than doing the pre-creasing as I did. But as I mentioned I find it easier to get nice precision especially when you're using tissue foil if you do the pre-creasing before and when you're working on quite elaborate models as these, it's quite good to really get good precision in the beginning. Then fold up a flap and add a crease. And let's do that on both sides. And fold one of them down again. And now we're going to rotate this so that this triangle is pointing down. And we're going to flip it over. And now we're going to do a squash fold on one of these flaps to make it symmetrical, so go inside these two layers and then flatten down and you can check that it's precise by aligning the crease with the point. So I actually prefer working on the back of the model here. And then we're going to start a crease in this point to form a right angle here. So you're aligning edge with edge. And then we're going to take this edge and align it with that edge we just created. And unfold and repeat in the other direction. So again, a crease in this point with a right angle here by aligning edge with edge. And fold that edge to the outside edge and unfold. 
so that we have this pre-creasing right now. Now we're going to go along these creases right here in mountain folds, opening up the paper like this and same on the other side, opening the paper going along the creases we just created and you get this house shape and then you push this flat creating new creases right here and try to really get a nice alignment here. There we go. Then we're going to go along these creases right here in something like a rabbit ear. So we're doing both of them at the same time, folding this in half and flattening it down and flattening like this. Then we're going to open this diamond shape along the diagonal and flatten this one, this red area, to the top. So you're opening this up and you can use this point, move it over to there to get nice precision. And then you flatten the rest of the paper symmetrically. Then we're going to take that red area and fold it down and then we're going to open this up and while doing so we're going to make a mountain fold along here along the existing crease and bring that paper up like this. Just make sure that you get a nice accurate point here and then bring it inside and you're creating two new creases right here. And then we're going to make inside reverse folds on these two areas right here. Once here and once there. Just pre-creasing and then bringing the paper inside. And next we're going to take this red area and pull it while stabilizing this section and then we can flatten this paper down like this. And then we're going to take this point as a reference and this prominent crease right here. And we're going to fold the paper up so that that corner meets the crease. And unfold so we have this pre-crease. So we have this pre-crease. And then fold this whole section up and fold one layer over. Careful with the points, flattening, and then bringing the section down. And now using the creases we just prepared, we're going to fold this over and go along those creases, like this. So you can see that small corner still popping out. And now we need to repeat the same steps on this side. I'm just going to walk through these very quickly, but if you need more help, just go back in the video and look at it in more detail there. The first step was to make a symmetrical squash here. And after that, I hope you recognize all of the steps that followed. And when we've completed both sides, we're going to take this lower point and bring it to the center, crease, unfold, 
and then start to crease in this point, making a right angle here by bringing edge to edge and then folding down, very similar to the sequence that we did before. And then do the same in the other direction. And that leaves you with this pre-creasing and we're going to go along this crease right here in a mountain fold, opening the layer and folding the paper up along this horizontal crease and flattening it down and then going inside here having a valley fold right along this central parting and going along the diagonal here to flatten the paper like this. Then take this model and pull out that extra layer of paper that you can see right here. I'm just going to open it up a bit more so that you can see it really nicely and pull it out and then go along this crease right here and open this to flatten it over to that side so that this point will land right in that corner and you'll have something that looks a bit like a bird base on this half. and create the creases. Then fold over this flap and pre-crease the angle bisector of this angle down here. And you only need to go to a crease that you can see right there and same on the other side. Then we're going to fold behind just a tip here and if you want orientation, it should be about a quarter, so you can mark the halfway point and then you know how far to go. This is now a quarter and then just fold it behind so that later we can create the nose. Then we're going to fold in along those angle bisectors we prepared and we're going to go here along pre-creasings. You can see these are quite visible and then you can flatten the paper and maybe manipulate it a bit so that it looks quite symmetrical. Like this. And then rotate and fold up the paper to then bring it down with these two flaps here by kind of folding down and opening up so that you get a symmetry again. So the creases will start in those points and you'll have this point landing here and that point landing over there. And you're creating some new creases here maybe clean up some paper drift along the way and flatten. Then we're going to take these triangles here and fold them down like this and same on the other side. Like that. Next we're going to take one of these corners here and we're going to crease one third of the way in here so that basically the section you're folding in is the same width as the section that remains uncovered, like that. And same on the other side. Folding edge on edge so that you get a right angle. Like that. And then unfold those. And then you need to make a small squash fold here. So you're going between the layers. And
and folding flat. So it looks like this. Here it's kind of like a small bird base and here it's more like a preliminary base. Same on the other side. Then we want to do a color change on these small sections here. So we need to open the paper a little and then go inside these layers and there's two here, so go between both layers and then flip that over so that, well, let's first do one side, perhaps it's easier to see then. Now you can see that one side is red and then we can also, let's unfold this again so that the paper is easier to manipulate can also go between this layer and flip it over like that and then push the paper together again and then you see that this whole section is now red. It's a bit of a tricky step, perhaps one of the trickiest, but it also creates the eyes. And repeat on this side again. Let's first just do that small half because I find it a bit easier when you already have that orientation point. So that's this one and now we need to take care of that section. We're just going to reopen the paper a little and then carefully flip over the rest of the paper to then collapse it back down. So there we go. Next we need to shape the eyes, so we're just going to fold behind to make this section look symmetrical. right here and then we also want to shorten this section here and we're just going to fold behind so that we're kind of taking this here inside the layers perhaps like this and same on the other side. Like that. Next we're going to flip this over and work on these sections right here. We're first going to do a reverse fold of this flap right here. going all the way to that point right there and flattening down and same on the other side. Then we're going to take this section and reverse fold it again, bringing edge to edge. and flattening, same on the other side. And then repeat on this flap. Just ensure that the rest of the paper stays in place and you always go up to this point to get good precision. And again, bring edge to edge, adding a reverse fold. This is preparing the whiskers.
So now we have these whiskers prepared and we need to position them. So we're going to take the first set, you have three here, and fold it up quite far and you'll need a squash fold here so that you can actually flatten it and as an orientation point you can take this point to lie approximately on that outside edge here. So you can see here that point is approximately on that edge and you did a small squash fold and do the same on the other side to get a nice symmetry. And then proceed with the next point and fold it up so that it's approximately centered. Again, there's just a very small squash fold necessary. And here. And then lift these layers right here so that these whiskers are now hidden and they will be revealed later again this. And now we're going to fold this big section down in a long valley fold and here we're going to go along these existing creases that meet in this point. Like this. And then we can fold this over to one side. Let's go to the left. Then we're going to pre-crease this section going horizontally from this point right here. So catch the point and align that corner with the central crease to get nice precision. Then unfold and swing this flap down and make a crease so that this edge aligns with that corner down there. Make a strong crease. Then bring this point up to that pre-creasing we just created, that cross here. And then make a squash fold by going between these two layers. Make it symmetrical. And then do a color change. So open it up. Take a layer on each side to flip it around right by pushing on this corner right here. And same on the other side. Maybe open the paper up a bit so that your paper doesn't rip. Always depends on what paper you're using with these wraparounds. Sometimes you need to open it up quite wide. And when you have that, neaten up the creases. and flatten down so that now we have this color changed part and we're going to fold it in half like this. Then we're going to take this top layer and we're going to move this paper so that when you have this lying straight you get an edge here that is parallel to this edge over there. approximately like this. Now before we finish the bow we're going to pre-crease the ears here and hide them away a bit so we're going to have a crease that basically starts in this point and is a bit farther away in the top and making a mountain fold there and then take that paper and go inside to tuck that inside. Can you see that? And if you look at it from the other side you can see that now you have an ear shape. 
and you want to do the same thing on the other side and if you have some wrinkles here you can straighten them out it does happen especially <laughs> with tissue foil it has its advantages and disadvantages and uh, it's quite easy to get crumbles here and there but in exchange you get very flat layers which is quite important for this model so you have that and you can check whether it's quite symmetrical and it seems to be so so next we're going to take one layer here and fold it over and then fold behind the section up here those are very many layers so if you're not using tissue foil you might find this quite troublesome with tissue foil it works really well and then we're going to continue working on that bow so first we're going to again take that layer and then align the edge we're creating with the one below like that and then we have this section right here and we're going to make an angle bisector and then sink the area just to shape it further. So you can see here that's the pre-creasing. It's quite a narrow area there and we're just going to sink that and I'm just going to go inside these layers right here so that it's a bit easier. You can see here you can very nicely make a nice neat sink so that that shape is changed. And next we need to bring this section to the top where the bow is supposed to be. So we're going to do a mountain fold and as orientation if you look at this point of the continuation of this edge right here that point should land about up there. So if you want you can slightly you know make a small pinch there and that pinch goes to the top and then you can flatten it you can see this corner right here and we want to get rid of that and we also have some paper right here and we're going to hide both of those by doing a swivel fold so we're going to do a mountain fold right along here going between these two layers doing a mountain fold and at the same time bringing in this paper right here to hide it so that you have kind of this triangle shape that's being hidden like this. Then we're going to open this bow and now we need to shape it we want to make this quite symmetrical so we need to fold behind a corner that's approximately su the size of that sunken area there like this then we need to add pleats to indicate um, the knot of the bow so for that we're going to do a mountain fold and very very closely to it a valley fold on one side and we need to do the same thing on the other side. And of course you can shape the bow however you like, but this is one way you can do it and the way Mark suggests. And then we need to shape this so we're going to have these diagonal folds and we're going to need that gap from the pleat and squash it a bit so that you can actually create that diagonal fold. And in the center here, where the knot is going to be created, you're going to have a straight crease. So I'm doing a mountain fold here, opening up that pleat in the top and keeping it established in the center, going over and then up again and pressing it flat like this and the same down here doing 
an opening of the pleat just here and not right there in the center of that bow. And same on this side. Just being a bit careful while shaping that bow. And when you have that pretty much settled, you can then flatten. And when you have that, you can adjust the position of the bow so that it's just right. So you're making a small valley fold here, basically. Again, through many layers. Perhaps like this. Now we need to hide these corners right here. We're just going to make some mountain folds. Simple shaping. And this whisker we're going to straighten out again. Fold behind. Making it quite straight. Like that. And then we're going to fold this section up to show the face, the eyes and the nose. And we're going to go pretty much as far as you can. And then we're going to take these whiskers and just make them thinner by mountain folding them in half. Like this. And the third one also. And you can also fold behind a corner here to round the head. And here you want to get rid of some paper too. Also shaping the ears a little. And same on this side. First narrow those whiskers with mountain folds. And shape the face. And then your cutie cat, designed by Mark Kirschenbaum, is all done. Now, if you've fallen in love with this model just like I did, definitely check out Mark Kirschenbaum's website, sakuraorigami.com. And diagrams for this model are also published in Origami Tante Dan Volume 15, I think that's from 2009, and in the model collection of the Czech Origami Convention 2013. And if you enjoyed this video, how about you try folding Yopio's Moment of Truth designed by Neil Elias. It's another model where I highly recommend using tissue foil. I've also got a playlist of further origami animals and a playlist of advanced models in general. Now, if you liked this video, why don't you let me know by commenting, giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. And finally, do check out my website happyfolding.com for more origami content. I hope to see you around and happy folding!